D Lab got a real cool one on the bench today. It is an orange model OR 120 100 watt head. Guy shipped it to me. I believe he is the original owner. He said it was working, but it sounds kind of sad. So let's fix the orange. All right, let's give it a look over. This is the real McCoy, guys. Made in London. Heavy as all get out. Look at the size of the power transformer. I've already removed all the tubes. Let me flip it around, you can see the back. All right, back side, you see we've got the original filter caps. One socket here appears to have been changed. Original transformers. Go down here, you got your mains. Select a couple of fuses. There is London, England. Pretty cool, huh? and the speaker impedance select. Now for the good stuff, let's look underneath. So this is how it arrived. Yes, with the AC disconnected. Obviously I didn't fire it up before I opened it up and inspected it. There's the ILED board, or in this case a circuit board. Full of old caps. These original filter caps down here I'm going to replace with F and T's. Okay? I'll try to do that throughout I did notice that some of these caps are really loose. So I'm suspecting that underneath the solder connections are cracked. That one's not too bad. This one here is looser than a goose, right? Controls obviously need to be cleaned. I'll go through and buzz out all the resistors, etc. Make sure everything's good. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the circuit board, flip her over and see what those solder connections look like. All right, the board's loose. Let's see what we got going on down here. All right. Yeah, there's some crack connections, but it's kind of hard for me to show you it. I need to get my magnifying glass out, inspect these connections, get these electrolytics changed. All right, pull the first cap. You can see a little bulge right there. So when I replace these caps, I'm going to take a little bit of adhesive, put them on the bottom side to help keep these guys secure. They don't work their solder connections loose again. All right, first new cap is in place. Get them soldered up. I folded the leads over about a quarter of an inch to help with the connection. I don't like to just put them straight up like this. I like to fold the leads over rather than let them stand up. These fatigue easier this here gets a better mechanical bite. I've got all the electrolytics replaced on the circuit board. Now I have to change out these two caps which I have not been able to locate. So the plan is is to put in these F&T 100 microfarad caps in their place and I'm going to leave the originals where they're at. So I need to mount a terminal board and that would be pretty difficult down there wouldn't it? So what I'm going to do is take this vintage board and I'm going to mount him in here against the wall, stack in the caps, lift this wiring and put it on the terminal board, leave the originals in place. Alright, there's the new filter caps. You can see it was pretty tight. The terminal board just made it, the caps just made it. But nothing's interfering. I put an additional insulator in between here. It's all wired up. The original filter caps are disconnected and just sitting there along for the ride. I have the power cord reconnected, so I'm going to bring it up the Variac and see if there's any signs of life. Alright, so the next item of concern on the orange amp is this wiring between the output tubes. You see everything's ran in parallel. You might think, yeah, that kind of looks neat. But it really isn't. If you take a close look down here, you'll see some of the silicon gel 
I believe what was going on maybe in the past is there was some arcing between these wires and these terminals because they're touching each other. So somebody thought, hey, let's do the old TV repairman's trick and throw that Corona dope on here. I don't know if that's what this is or it was an attempt, but I'm going to remove that, clean things up. We're going to grab the filament wires, route them separately with the proper color codes, make sure there's enough distance between wires to avoid any chance of arcing. So I'm going to start with the filament wires since I still have access to them. You see they fed a tube here in the center and then went both directions. I'm going to reroute that to one of the ends. I don't think it'll make it over there, but it'll make it over here. And then I'll have the twisted pair of greens going from tube to tube. We'll get that taken care of and then I'll separate out the high voltage. So there are the relocated filament wires coming from the transformer hitting the first tube. I've removed the jumpers going to these tubes. Here are the last of that yellow and red wire they use for the filaments. If you do this, make absolutely sure that you're reconnecting to pins 2 and 7. If not, it could be disastrous. So the filament wiring is complete fender style. I've made sure that all other wires are well away from each other. I've got the circuit board temporarily mounted. So at this point I'm going to bring the amp up on a variac and just verify all voltages are present. So I'm just going to take my variac and just bump the voltage. I just want to make sure that the high voltage is getting to pin 3 of each of the output tubes. Then I'll check the screens, and then for sure we'll check the negative bias. And here is my negative bias on one of the output tubes. When you're verifying these voltages, always check at the tube socket. You can check at the power supplies, it's good, and it may be absent at the socket where it really matters. Alright, everything checks out underneath, so I'm going to go ahead and get some tubes installed. Bring it up slow on a variac and see if we can get a signal through it. Alright, the amp is powered up. Output tubes are looking good. Now these are sacrificial tubes, okay? Let me bring up the gains, take a look at the scope. Oh yeah. It's my output meter. What kinds of power? You can actually hear the tubes singing. Take a listen. But yeah, she's working well. Let's get it hooked up to a speaker and see what it sounds like. Here we are out in the shop at D Lab, <laughs> and this is a what I figure to be a mid to late 70s orange amp, which uh, we haven't seen too many of those. Yeah. And, uh, this one came in, it was kind of a sick puppy. It uh, had serious uh, filter cap issues, and tubes were all shot, and uh, some of the other electrolytics and what other caps needed some help, but Terry's got it all straightened out. It's a little bright sounding amp, but it sounds, it's got a real nice sound. famous for being really clean sound and it has nothing but headroom. If you listen, I can crank it up a little and it just about sounds just the same. <laughs> <laughs> 